So to help us break down this rural-urban divide, I want to introduce you to two more analysts that we have joining us tonight. Our longtime analyst, Marco Lowe from Seattle University, and Bill Bryant, former Republican candidate for governor back in 2016. Thanks so much for, for, for being here. You. So your Thanks. thoughts, because we saw this nationwide, but particularly here in Washington State in these initiatives, in the legislative races, uh, this rural-urban divide. What do you think, Bill? Well, I think in some of these initiatives, you had them crafted to appeal to an urban audience. And frankly, if upfront people had gone and talked to folks in central or eastern Washington or in southwest Washington and tweaked them, perhaps they could have come together and put together an initiative that more people across the state could have supported. But there's, in many cases, a real arrogance that this is what Seattle wants, this is what King County wants, and we're going to raise enough money to push it down everybody else's throat. And what you saw is rural Washington's getting tired of it. So in these races, first of all, both were grossly outspent. So it wasn't really even an open discussion as much as it was $20, $30 million was spent. So it, you would see that happening in most races, they might fail. But in these rural areas, you don't have the economic support that you've had in King County and other urban areas where a tax may be a much smaller part of your budget as opposed to a significant hit to somebody who's already struggling financially. Also with taxes, I don't think that the initiatives, particularly when we're dealing with soda or some of the other issues, carbon, I don't think anyone made the case on why this money, these new taxes are necessary. And there's a real tax uh, you know, weariness out there. And so unless you're explaining exactly what you're going to get for the money and why it's necessary, and why it's necessary when our budget projections are $4 billion in the black, you're not going to be able to pass an initiative. People are wondering, how much is enough? I know that uh, Chris Vance, as you know, former head of the state GOP, former candidate for Senate, he has said in the former last... Republican. Re Republican as well. He has said he believes the Republican Party is dead in King County, that there's a need now for a third party. Based on the results that we saw here in some of the legislative districts down south in the 30th with Mark Melosha losing, what do you think about the idea that the Republican Party, as he says is dead. In well, County. I think Chris wants it to be dead so that he can then create the need for what he's doing. But really, there are a lot of us who are still very focused on it, dealing with the issues that people care about. That is, what are we going to do with education in this state? What, how do we pull people together from both sides of the aisle and talk about not just how we spend more money, but how we make sure it gets to kids and that we're improving their performance? There are a lot of people who are moderate Republicans who want to fix our transportation mess. There are even moderate Republicans, like myself, who want us to be active on climate change. Those people are not dead, they're not going away, and they're actually working in their communities and city councils and port commissions to find common uh, sense solutions to a lot of the problems that people all around King County want addressed. But Marco, what does it mean to next year's legislature that those moderate Republicans did not get reelected in their King County legislative districts? Well, I think it does say that the messaging will have to be different and what they let people run on. It's even hard to get through a primary as a moderate Republican in King County right now because if they don't allow moderation in the party, and I think right now you would say it's very hard to get support, you will get pushed out of King County and other growing urban areas of the state. And Marco's right. Uh, fundamentally, the state Republican Party needs to decide whether it wants to be a statewide party. And if it does want to be a statewide party, then we have to give candidates permission to talk about issues and talk about them from a perspective of the people that they're running to serve. Yeah, and the challenge is ultimately, in the next census, you're going to see even more growth in King County. So more legislative districts will be fit into that growth and they'll get wider and larger in the rural areas that will just put more power into King County. Right, okay. And Bill, Marco, you guys are sticking around with us through the here. show. So <laughs> we're going to be breaking much more, uh, breaking down much more of the state picture and then also the congressional picture as well.